I would probably call myself a bit of a social entrepreneur, so that's probably the headspace. I'm very into connecting with my community. Establishing a business that could provide financial and infrastructural support to friends of the earth so they spend less time worrying about covering the rent. This, this creek union was formed on a needs basis. This, the local economy here was changing. A lot of people uh, liked it to be self-sufficient, uh, but they couldn't get bank finance. So that was one of their requirements was to have a cooperative style bank that would look after and develop the community. Always with the goal to become financially viable and without that need for government money and social enterprising. You know, we were talking about it and now it's everywhere. <laughs> so it just seems to be the right time. What's going to work for us here? I think that was what we were quite clear. We needed to come up with our own model. Um, and we looked at cooperatives, as I mentioned. We looked at farm and fuel cooperatives in other small towns where the locals have got together and, and pulled their resources to keep the service yeah. running. We've grown and funding streams from government are not what they were and our needs are greater and that it is really, really important for series that we have um, our own income generating um, opportunities. So we, we've had a not-for-profit housing sector but it's tended to be quite small, not do its own developments and only lease properties from the government. I think because this is uh, an untested idea, you know, we just really were guessing in the beginning and most of the hard work has happened after we've started in terms of refining the model and working out what works. A year in you start to realise it's nice to have good ideas but you need to have good business plans as well. And so a bit of the focus started to shift towards looking at the business, the serious business aspect of it. I think it's interesting with Series Reconnect, um, we're six months into you know, knowledge of, of good funding to start that enterprise. And it's a really different experience doing it with, with good resources. Yeah. So we're much more accustomed to the just kind of making do model. I would think over the last two years we're probably more um, strategic in our planning mm -hmm. where we take a little bit more time, although we do make decisions still very fast, yeah. the change happens very fast. Mm -hmm. The changes in approach have actually been relatively limited and we're only now starting to build apartments for sale. In terms of change how we did, more development as we went along, so looking for opportunities as they came. I think at the start, like there was at least six months that I was having to work on company structure. That was pretty full on. So, you know, it was looking like it was going to cost me five or ten thousand dollars to go to some lawyers to get a constitution drawn up and to do all the things that I needed to do to have this, you know, legal company, which I didn't have. Business modelling we started early, um, so that and, and put some um, get out points in to our planning. So, you know, if we only raise this much money, what are we going to do? Uh, if we don't get the site by this date. Do we stop? Do we go? A lot of financial modelling was done because uh, although that sounds very dry and, and sort of hard work and rather dull, it's, it's actually the lifeblood of any new enterprise. In fact, we spent 20 months prior to incorporation. The board of management was really crucial, so choosing a, you know, the right people to be able to help drive the project and like, realise our goals. It was quite a lot of um, research done into the viability of this sort of a business. Um, part of the way in which it was established was that the, the founding members were on the NICE scheme and so there was quite a lot of work that had to be done in order to satisfy the requirements for the NICE scheme. Um, so, yeah, there was certainly a lot of planning. All those legislative requirements to set up a credit union would have had to have been met. So I believe the working party started in 83 and the, the Cretan wasn't registered until August 1984. You also uh, would have needed some premises to trade from. So while we had volunteers working, no cash requirements, you still needed some calculators, some machines to uh, keep all the banking records. Money, it's money. <laughs> it's always money and, and um, <laughs> having some staff. Yeah, so it's not just financial cost too. Mm -hmm. it's cost on the individual and the other people within the organisation because we are also putting in extra time, extra work, hours and hours and hours to make things work. Money. <laughs>
Where's it going to come from? How are we going to get it? How do you do a initial public offer for <laughs> start a company? So dealing with ASIC and the rules and regulations required there. I think getting that sign up by the government, getting the partnership between state and council was a big challenge. But once it was achieved, um, there was momentum after that. I think one challenge was securing the right board members, and we were fortunate. We got some fantastic directors, some of whom are still with us. Ironically, the biggest challenge initially was getting funding agreements signed. That if you do want to set up this ethical company, that it is so complicated and potentially expensive, there needs to be some kind of new company structure or some kind of new business structure that makes it a bit easier for people. Negotiating the lease was extremely hard. Um, most commercial real estate agents are not interested in not-for-profits or social enterprises or anything charitable. Having a very small amount of startup capital was a major issue um, because there was no money for wages for probably the first six months. The frictions where people aren't getting paid much money or sometimes no money at all and they're working very long hours. Well now it's really about managing growth and, and change. As you become a more mature and complex organisation, um, staff development, they're, they're, those issues kick in and have got to be taken seriously. Just administratively trying to set up really good systems so that um, everyone in the organisation knows what's going on and can be involved in day-to-day -day operations. Uh, staffing, you know, finally settling on somebody or, or the right the right people with the right skills and attitude to take it forward. Within the board there was probably a bit of a challenge in sort of, you know, okay we've got the survey running, what are we going to do with ourselves now? We've got the big banks who are now moving into, some of them are moving into community banking and they have a larger book and they can squeeze margins and they force us to come with them. So it's, it's a lot of competition pressure out there at the moment. To do things like pay commercial rent, we don't receive any funding from any operational funding, ongoing operational funding from any external source. So for things like wages, the rent, and all our bills, everything that's sort of a, a usual cost of doing business we have to pay for um, with money that we earn ourselves. Different uh, groups or different enterprises have sought different kinds of advice. Um, we're very lucky that we're able to attract a lot of skilled volunteers and we have a fantastic partnership with National Australia Bank at the moment and they're um, providing lots of skilled volunteers for all different parts of our enterprise from IT through to you know business planning. If it's getting uh, support also from ma other management, from board, the board of directors in terms of you know, where do we go from here, making decisions around the, you know, the different social enterprises. Greens work on cooperative principles. We also have a trade body that works on cooperative principles called Advocates Australian Mutuals. They do a lot of our lobbying, compliance work, research. So as being a member of that, that provides us with a lot of data, a lot of information, but also resources that can come and visit us. My benefit was that I was a young person. So there are lots of things available to help young people out. People love young people who do stuff. But it was actually like small business owners that were the most helpful in terms of giving really practical advice because it is essentially a small business and small business owners, they know they've done the hard yards themselves in starting up. They know what to expect and they know what the pitfalls are. So that was probably where the best advice came from.